The Lord be with you. Welcome to the online worship service of Bethlehem Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Karsten Voskel, and it is a privilege and joy to welcome you as we gather together on this second Sunday in the season of Advent, as we gather in this journey, as we move towards the grand celebration of Christmas, of the realization that, that God is fully with us, Emmanuel, and God has been for us as well. A realization that opens us up and frees us to also then be with and for this world that God so deeply loves. You will find the, the prayers printed on the screen, the prayers of confession, the, the Lord's Prayer. You'll also find the Apostles' Creed and our hymn of the day printed for your fuller participation in this worship service. I'll now invite uh, us to prepare ourselves for uh, worship, and, and Mark and Robin Wilson will be lighting our Advent candle this week. Let us now continue to worship. Our souls in stillness continue to wait. Through God's grace, we join the work of peace, a peace where the lion lies down with the lamb, where adversaries become friends, where past pain finds wholeness. We wait in God's peace, knowing what God desires of us and this wider world. Our souls in stillness continue to wait. Well, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. So let us together now honestly and humbly confess that we have not always lived as God desires. Please, please join me in prayer. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. O well, people of God, hear this good news, this gospel. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from whatever that holds you back and free to live into the peaceable realm of God. 
And may you be strengthened by God's love, comforted in Christ's peace, and accompanied with and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with you and give you peace. Amen. We please join me for our prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from Isaiah 40. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written, in the prophet Isaiah. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the all whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Jesus Christ. I invite you to pause for our children's message. Hello, everyone. It's good to gather together, to worship together. So we're up to two candles, meaning we're two Sundays into this season of Advent. And uh, last week, uh, the first candle remind us of the hope that we have in, in Jesus, the hope of Jesus coming back to finish all the wonderful things that were started. And this week, he is, you heard uh, Mark and Robin a little bit earlier, the second candle is uh, for peace, a theme of peace. Next few weeks, we'll hear about joy and love, and, and then we'll be able to celebrate Christmas together, the, the culmination 
of peace, love, joy, and uh, hope. When I was younger, uh, my brother was a few years older. I've mentioned him before. His name is Derek. Derek and I, as quite often uh, brothers and sisters do, we, we did fight a little bit and we did uh, square away, especially when we played basketball. We would end up usually on the ground uh, wrestling or, or even worse, uh, or the ping pong table, table tennis. We would often uh, end up in not so great moments. Um, and that was tough because uh, my parents would have to step in and they would have to stop us from fighting and, and I would go off to my room and my brother would go off to his room or, or something. Um, that is not what I love the most about my time with my brother. Because there are other times where we played board games together, like Risk and Monopoly, and they didn't end up um, in, in fighting. Sometimes they did too. But uh, the times I uh, spent uh, watching a TV show with my brother, the times we spent being creative together as some arts, the time we spent on a couch together opening presents on Christmas Eve, those are the moments of, of true love and connection. And so as we talk about peace, I know it's important for us not to fight with our brothers and sisters, not to fight with our neighbors and friends at school, um, but there's more to it. Um, not just not fight, but to, to enjoy each other, to love each other, to, to find uh, gifts and, and being together. And that's what I'll be talking about um, in my sermon. This is a wonderful term from the Old Testament called shalom. And I want to, you to to hear what I say about shalom and to hear what it means to, to really grow into the relationships that God desires for all of us. So have a wonderful week as we live into the peace of Christ together. Let us pray. God, I thank you for the gift of peace, the gift of hope, the gift of joy, the gift of love. May we continue to, to live into these great themes with you and for you and with each other. And today when we find ways of, 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 of loving our brothers and sisters, our friends, our neighbors, our cousins, people around us um, so that we can truly enjoy um, all the ways in which you are, 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 are working through them and working through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've had the great privilege of bringing the Advent Huga kits to so many members and friends of Bethlehem Church these past few weeks. It's so good to say a quick hello at the door and to safely engage in a little bit of a connection and warmth as we continue some needed precautions involving COVID. And from these exchanges, it only emphasized how much I miss being with you on Sunday mornings, worshiping in this space. Miss exchanging God's peace. Miss when you come forward and I get to, to look at you in your eyes and to say your name and to say, Christ's body broken for you. I miss listening to the choir rehearse. I miss the children racing here in the pitter patter of their feet, racing up the stairs to come to, uh, to uh, Sunday school. I miss the energy of children eating cookies afterwards in our narthex, those lingering conversations with members who come a good 30 minutes early or 30 minutes, stay 30 minutes later to, to continue to cultivate community. I miss what happens during the week here as well. The HeartSight agency meeting that gathers Lots of nonprofits and, and community agencies doing amazing work, collaborating, talking, community, you, gathering here in the sanctuary to do further work here in Heartside. I miss our friends who meet in our adult room, the Rose Room right behind me. I miss how they, they fill the room with joy. They, they smile so deeply when they, they see the infant toddlers from the Blue Room come into their room or when they come and visit the IT room. I miss the daily games of, of rock, paper, and scissors that I get to play with the school-age children in the green room. And I miss watching the, the true love and dedication of, of our teachers and our staff from the BIC who are doing such amazing, life-changing work in all that they do. 
See, Bethlehem is all this. It is a dispersed community of believers and doers spread throughout West Michigan, and also a centering location for us and for community partners to do ministry and to impact this city with God's grace and God's mercy. Bethlehem, Bethlehem is all this. And as we move towards our 150th anniversary of being a congregation in downtown Grand Rapids, uh, we will certainly have opportunities to write more chapters of this, this amazing story. I say that fully realizing how challenging this particular chapter of the story is for all of us. COVID numbers have only risen. The, un the unemployment, the employment data that came out on Friday looks bleak. Friends and family, mem family members are in our homes and in our hospitals uh, fighting the pandemic. Others are in our midst who are working through cancer, who are preparing for back surgery, who are dealing with the reality of, of depression and isolation and loneliness without the fuller presence of the community. On top of all this is a nation still struggling, a world at, in, in strife over geopolitical realities, families and marriages, and friendships struggling with these new normals. It often feels like we are teetering on the brink of even greater devastation and discord. And it felt that way right after 9-11 as well. Lots of unknown those days. Lots of suffering. Lots of questions that we couldn't so easily answer. I was born just days after the Yom Kippur War and the reverberation of the Vietnam War and the very day that the, the impeachment process for Richard Nixon began, October 30th, 1973. Then too, more unknown. Then too, more suffering. Then too, more hard, not so easy to answer questions. Many of you can point to specific seasons in your life where it seemed like everything was tossed up in the air, or that the heartache would never end, or that nothing would ever be the same. And often that's been true. It hasn't always been the same. Now the Gospel of Mark was actually written to a very specific context, a very similar moment in the history of God's people. You see, a Jewish revolt against Roman occupation failed miserably. And as you can guess, Rome's reprisal was brutal, including the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. This is the destruction, the very symbol of the life and faith of God's people. As some of my friends put it, Mark's gospel is written, specifically written to a people who themselves felt like everything was stark, severe, and even God forsaken. So then too, lots of unknown, lots of suffering, and lots of not so easy to answer questions. So Mark begins with an echo of something very familiar to those who were, who were crushed in that moment. The beginning of the good news, he writes, drawing people's imagination back to Genesis 1. Back then it was God, willing to create goodness with us and for us, inviting us even to be stewards and participants in this ongoing creation through our relationships. And here in our gospel today, Mark reminds us that God is far from done with such ever-creating, ever-redeeming work. Far from done. Which is the good news. The gospel. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. The Son of God. Now I've been watching a, a powerful series about the Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur War. I've also been re-watching uh, a series, a little bit older series from HBO called Rome. I like some of these historical 
uh, shows and series and dramas. The first season of Rome details the kind of rise of Julius Caesar and his, his battle against his one-time partner, Pompey. There are lots of military conquests that go on throughout the show and throughout the history of Rome, which also required some sort of official news to be shared with the Roman people. And they use this person throughout many of the scenes as a kind of transition point through the many battles. You see, the Greek term gospel actually describes these updates from the battlefield where someone would stand usually in the middle of Rome to, to declare the world what was going on. This declaration, this update was called gospel and thus the person would herald the gospel, herald this good news or these updates rather to the world. Sound familiar? So Mark and the Apostle Paul and some of the other early Bible writers and authors took this term and subversively used it to describe the core message of Jesus Christ. And fair enough, it wasn't swords or military might that destroyed the power of sin. It was God's love. It wasn't gold or glory that overpowered our greed and hatred. It was God's love. It won't be acts of revenge against Rome or a desire to pay uh, evil for evil, but instead us using the, the greatest gift that God has given us, the greatest tool for peace and shalom, which is love. This still is thoroughly subversive today, as is the idea of unmerited grace as is the practice of true forgiveness, as is the work for justice for the sake of the marginalized, as is a whole different world order based upon nothing except the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't think it is a coincidence that Mark began his gospel account, The World's Salvation, by first echoing Genesis 1, and then subverting the very worldly, empire-like thinking about power and purpose. Because Roman centurions, like I said, aren't going to be the answer, nor are cycles of revenge or hatred, nor are survival of the fittest strategies. We only go back to being stewards and co-creators with God through love. We only regain a handle on the craziness of our future through cultivating healthy relationships in the here and now. We only find a true joy when we help others flourish all around us, which is the way of Christ, which are the teachings of Christ, which is the good news from Christ. What I'm describing is that marvelous Hebrew, ter Hebrew term called shalom. While we often translate the word in English as peace, it has so much more depth than the simple absence of conflict. The absence of conflict is important, but that's not all that God desires. Right? Think of it this way. To create peace between two conflicting uh, neighbors, we might suggest that we erect a fence between their houses. You stay on that side, you stay on that side. And it might work at keeping them from conflicting physically, maybe even verbally at each other. But to create a thriving relationship between the two, we might suggest planting a garden between their two property lines. It might be hard at first, to deal with whatever past pain is causing the rift. But without conversation and cooperation and engagement, there won't ever, there's never gonna be reconciliation. And without reconciliation, there's never gonna be restoration. And without restoration, we will always fall short of God's design for this world and for us. See, like plants that could grow in such a garden, our relationships are all gifts from God for the purposes of mutual love and engagement. 
So keep cultivating that type of love. Keep sharing this way of shalom. Keep building this type of peace. There's no one, you see, God created or designed anywhere for you to hate. Absolutely no one. And no conflict too big for God's grace to heal and to mend and to find justice. No one, again, hear that again, no one designed for any of us to hate, which means everyone to love in this world and no one to hate. We have to get beyond simply thinking about law and order, beyond building more fences between neighbors, beyond circling the wagons and tribalizing our society, beyond seeing each other as threats and rivals and enemies, beyond, as one author puts it, a dehydrated imagination for life. The way of Christ is the way of the cross. The teachings of Christ ultimately direct us to that fuller love. And the good news from Christ is that there is a freedom for us to move beyond the military conquests, beyond the hyper-partisan ugliness, beyond the selfishness and cycles of pain. The good news, the gospel, is that there is a different way, as other friends put it in their book called Colossians Remixed. Shalom has to do with blessing, richness, abundance, and a far-reaching harmony that permeates and characterizes all of our relationships. That is our different way, right? Cultivating the love, building the peace, sharing the shalom, planting gardens with our neighbors, and flourishing in our relationships, thriving in our neighborhoods like this, being part of healthy, vibrant communities where God places us, everywhere where God places us. So yes, shalom is the far-reaching harmony that permeates and characterizes all of our relationships. And that is our different way, our way of heralding true gospel, of being co-creators in this work of goodness. Which is true up in Rockford, where one member was navigating online schooling with the children and planning work and doing others, to the other realities of life when I dropped by. Which is true over in Jensen, where another member was navigating COVID-19 realities for care facilities around West Michigan, doing uh, their, her, her absolute amazing best at helping us all. Which is true in Burton Heights, where one of our members was especially mindful of health vulnerabilities during this pandemic, which is true over in Wyoming, where one of you was working on your middle school curriculum when I stopped by, which is true here in Hartside, where some of our neighbors are still scrambling for warmer accommodations, where other neighbors are desperately finding creative ways to keep their business afloat, which is true in Holland, Spring Lake, Hudsonville, Whitneyville, Kentwood and Creston, Granville and Zealand, East Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, the Upper West Side, and everywhere else, members and friends of this congregation keep reaching further with harmony and humility to build the shalom that we so deeply desire, the shalom that God so deeply desires, the shalom that we were created for and now redeemed to join. Let us do so together. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us now affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. What do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue to pray. As we wait for you, God, we ask that you stir within us a new and profound hunger to share shalom within our world. Where there is hunger, ignite our compassion to change unjust structures of poverty and neglect. Where there is trauma and pain, ignite our curiosity to show up with empathy and concern. Where there are broken relationships and strained marriages, ignite our willingness to love and support everyone on the journey. We pray for shalom for the abused and the forgotten. We pray for shalom for those exhausted and alienated. We pray for shalom to break into closed boardrooms and paradigms of power. We pray for shalom to change who we are as your people, grateful for your gift of love and ready to herald your glad tidings of peace to all the nations. We certainly pray for those in our midst struggling with the impact of COVID, those waiting for surgeries, those grieving the loss of loved ones, those isolated and decimated by shame and regret, and those struggling with faith in life in general. We pray for Bethlehem Church and our many ministries near and far. We pray that we may all heed the invitation of John the Baptist and preparing for more of what God is doing through us and for us and with us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, may now the creator of the stars bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love, and the unexpected Spirit guide your journey, both now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.